everybody. It's time for your Bishop's bi-weekly video message. I just wanted to share some thoughts with you, but as it turns out, it's a gorgeous day outside. So uh, we're gonna go outside for a minute, but first take the necessary precautions. I got my hat. And of course my mask. Straighten that out a little bit so I look good. And the ever-present bottle of hand sanitizer. So I'll see you outside in a minute. Hey, looks like I should have brought my sunglasses out too. It's such a gorgeous day. That's a real gift. So I've been thinking in this Easter season about the scripture texts we've had for Sunday mornings. Thinking about the, all those people who were waiting on the resurrection even though they didn't know it. You know, Cleopas and his companion, possibly, probably even his wife who are just on their way home again after all the drama of Jerusalem, of Thomas who's getting on with life while the rest of the disciples and others are hiding away in the upper room of the expectancy of those who were gathered in the upper room too and and what they were feeling and thinking what was going through their hearts and minds. I know you've heard a lot about this from your own pastors as hopefully you've participated in online worship. But I've been thinking about that mix of emotions across the whole spectrum, right? Defiance, anger, grief. The words of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus are especially compelling to me. We had hoped they stop with this great look of sadness in their faces as they're talking to the very one they had hoped for and, and all they can think of in the midst of their their desperation and, and sadness is we had hoped. Hopes dashed, expectations unfulfilled. <clears throat> we had our staff meeting last week and as we were trying to assess where we were and where we could be, uh, Deacon Gail Rugi, my executive assistant said, we had a plan and I said, oh, that's our theme for next year's Synod Assembly. We had a plan. I think we all had a lot of plans, but they're not quite working out these days, are they? Our plans are kind of to survive. And you, as leaders in our Synod, have a lot to do with that. Not too much, I hope. Not more than you um, can handle. It's important to pace yourselves, but we had a plan. Well, I want to let you know we still have a plan. Or more importantly and more accurately, God has a plan. And that plan is, of course, always good. Easter season tells us that plan is about life. It's about hope. It's about carrying on so that we can make a difference, so that we can live through these times and in the midst of these times fully to the extent that we're able with the limitations that we face to continue to be people of light and hope and inspiration um, and guidance for those we are called to serve. And I've seen that beautifully in you and have great uh, confidence in the work that you're doing. But there's something else that I want to show you. So hold on. This is Turner Park. It's a local park near where I live. And these, my friends, are cherry blossoms. They are, as you can see, gorgeous. And when I walk through the park and the petals blow off the flowers, it looks like it's snowing in the springtime. This past Sunday was supposed to be a cherry blossom festival here in the park because there are more than 100 cherry trees and they are in full bloom. Of course, that festival got canceled because we're keeping physical distance from one another. But as you can look at these trees, it seems like they don't care. What they know is that it's springtime, it's time to come to life again and time to show off all their glory and all the newness that spring means. And it amazes me as I come to this park that spring is still happening. That cherry trees don't get the virus. It amazes me how much nature is thriving during this time. And these become signs of hope and signs of promise and signs of life for us. And, and I hope that you take some time to go outside and, and just see what's going on with new eyes, right? Because we see this all the time, but we don't always appreciate it because it's sort of routine. It's anything but routine now. Those disciples on the road to Emmaus, Thomas, back to life as usual, those followers of Jesus gathered in the upper room, 
This is what they were hoping for. This is what they were waiting for. Life, new life, and God did not disappoint. That's what we're waiting for too, right? Life, life on the other side. Life after this virus. Life that doesn't even have to be back to normal, but life that could be more something that we can enjoy. Time with friends and family, time with coworkers, time with people even. As a friend of mine said to me recently, for the first three weeks of this isolation, it was an introvert's dream, but after that it got old, even for us introverts. We need to be thriving together. We need to be God's people together. We need to be community together. And that day is coming, we just don't know when. But the promise isn't from primarily government officials or health officials, the promise is from God. The promise is from God that life goes on. To quote a line from an old movie, Jurassic Park, life will find a way. Life is finding a way. Life will find a way through our wisdom, our compassion, our care for one another. Life will find a way because that's the kind of God that we have. A God of life, a God of newness, a God of hope, a God of light in the darkness. So I wanted to share this beautiful day with you, this beautiful environment with you, so that you can have this hope. We can have this hope together. God always finds a way. And I hope that you're experiencing God finding a way in and through and for you as you serve your people and as we are church together, even in these strange times. God bless you and thank you for all you do.